Mr. Njemanzi Onyeka was born in a music-loving family. His love for music pushed him to pursue a career in music. He graduated with diploma from Mewson Diploma School of Music. He was the first recipient of Princess Banke Ademola Belcanto Singing Award in 2014. In 2014, as member of Mewson Diploma Choir, he was among the selected few that represented Nigeria in Isola de Sol International Choral Festival in Grado, Italy, and won gold and silver medals under the baton of Sir Emeka Wokiri. He was also awarded Bachelor of Arts in Music from the University of Lagos and was the best graduating student in his department. Mr. Ntemanzi Onyeka, being a certified flutist, singer and music theorist, has acted in the capacity of a chorister, choir leader, orchestra coordinator, conductor, music arranger and most importantly, a music teacher of repute and with high success rates. He believes that good unexpected things come to those that wait, work, pray and are ready. Now, the topic is the evil of misplaced accompaniment in musical works, vocal and instrumental. Now, let's have a brief overview of the seminar. First of all, we define accompaniment. What is an accompaniment? Then we talk about element of accompaniment. What makes a good accompaniment and what makes a bad accompaniment slash impact of misplaced accompaniment. Then, on the second part, we'll talk about the role of rhythm and accompaniment in style definition. And finally, hybridization. Now, what is an accompaniment? Accompaniment could be defined as the additional but subordinate music used to support a melodic line. Now, take note of the underlying words, additional but subordinate music used to support a melodic line. Accompaniment plays an additional role. It plays a supportive role. It is not the main musical future, but rather something supporting the main musical future which is usually the melodic line, uh, uh, the, which could be a, a, a choral performance, that's a choir performance, or, the, or a solo instrumentalist. Now, the key word uh, in this definition now is subordinate. Now, what does it mean for something to be subordinate? When is it something subordinate? What does it mean? Now, can we dictionary define subordinate as having a lower or less important position? something that's having a lower or less important position. Now, let's define accompaniment again, but now replacing the word subordinate with less important. So let's begin from beginning, define the accompaniment, but re re uh, replacing the word subordinate with less important and see how it goes. Now let's go. One, ready, go. Accompaniment will be defined as the additional, but less important music used to support a melodic line. Accompaniment technically is, um, is, is secondary to the main music performance. It's a secondary music supporting the melodic line, which is the primary music. So if you're doing anything as an accompanist, you are doing anything that is not supporting, that's not playing a supportive role, then what you're doing is questionable. Now, in piano music, for example, the left hand often performs chord, which sounds an accompaniment for the melody performed by the right hand. Those of us that have uh, that have uh, that have opportunity to play piano music or that have an opportunity to play piano music, you see that in most time the melody is usually on the right hand. The right hand, uh, 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 your right hand, play the melody on the piano, while the left hand plays some chordal, broken chords or whatever accompaniment, accompany, accompany style that is going with the melody. So now what happens, the melody here, accompaniment supporting, giving additional meaning to the melody. Similarly, a solo musician or a choir is often accompanied by a piano or an orchestra. In other words, accompaniment give the basic foundation to a piece of music. Note, again, additional but less important music used to support a melodic line. Additional but less important music used to support a melodic line. Um, 
consciously repeating these phrases so that we, we get accustomed with the basic meaning of accompaniment because before we uh, go on go on now um elements of a good accompaniment or elements of accompaniment steady tempo the first and steady tempo uh no most of us are familiar with what tempo is tempo in a layman term is uh, the speed of the music and that's how fast it could be fast tempo it could be slow tempo whatever the speed of the music uh, is that was referred to as tempo now a pianist should maintain a consistent tempo throughout the piece of throughout the piece to support the soloist or ensemble a pianist should maintain a consistent tempo throughout the piece to support the soloist or ensemble now musicality as a pianist you should be highly musical your musicality should be top notch because um, in, in, our, in, in our church, the instrument we use is just the key, keyboard, which is the accompaniment and the solo voices. So anything interesting happening in that choir administration, happening in that performance happens, comes from the keyboard. So they are the, 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 the core, the, the backbone of the entire performance. So for the music to make sense, the keyboard is going to be highly musical to be able to put up a magnificent, uh, uh, magnificent performance. Now, musicality in piano accompany refers to the acts of playing the piano in a way that enhances and supports the music being performed. It involves adding expressiveness, dynamics, phrasing and, inter uh, phrasing and interpretation to the accompaniment. Now, all the things have been saying for almost one hour, all the old board, board Boils down to, uh, boils down to musicality. That's that 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 is the term that encompasses all those things. If you are able to expressively play accompaniment, apply the dynamics, apply the phrasing and the interpretation, then you 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 must have a good sense of musicality to be able to do all those things. A skilled accompanist understands the role they play in supporting the main melody or soloist and they strive to create a seamless and harmonious musical experience. I read that again. A skilled accompaniment or a skilled accompanist understand the role they play in supporting the main melody or soloist. And they strive, they strive, they make effort. They are not lackadaisical about it. They work, they practice, they, 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 they go for trainings, they, they do whatever they can to create a seamless and harmonic musical experience. Because if you don't have it, you, you can't give it. And if you don't have it, you do what? You try to get it. And getting it is where, when you are trying to get it, that's why you, you develop your musical mindset to be able to uh, do all these things. They listen carefully to the lead performer and adapt the playing to complement their style, tempo, and mood. They listen carefully to the lead performer and adapt their playing to, uh, to complement their style, tempo, and mood. Now, songs come in different styles. There are playful songs. There are sorrowful songs. There are agitated songs. Yes, I mean, you can find any, any temperament you can think of. You can find them in songs and performance. But in our case, we have the instrument it's just the keyboard. We don't use drums. We don't use um, a whole lot of instru dramatic instruments. We, all, the, the, we, we use just the keyboard. So the, the bulk of the work, work lies with the accompanist to create this effect. If you want the music to be agitated, it's on the keyboard to create agitative effect. If you want the music to be mellow, sorrowful, it's on the keyboard. The singers do their part, the choir will do their part. The bulk of the work lies with the keyboard. And a keyboard will be able to show this dramatic effect, unless they are musically, they are they are exposed. Their musicality is a, they have a top-notch musical sense. Now, this also involves a deep understanding of musical structure and the ability to interpret the composer's intention. I already said, said that in music house structures. 
when the a composer writes something in the mind of the composer, we should, as, as, as a performer, as a singer, as an accompanist, you try to think what was the composer thinking when we were writing this music? What do they have in mind? How do they want this music to be performed? Because nobody just writes music or writes music, except in the olden days where people are commissioned to write music. Yeah, years back, if you, I mean, you commission people, you pay them money, even hand them as I, the whole hand them as I do this for reading in 24 days because a uh, hand was commissioned uh, to write that music for uh, one of the things happening then. But apart from that, most other music are inspired, especially gospel music, uh, hymns, they are inspired. So if you are going to accompany them, if you are going to sing them, you should try to put yourself in the position of the composer. Try to imagine, try to feel what they are feeling. What is the story behind this song? That's why it is sometimes it is necessary before you sing any song, you try to do a little bit of research. Why, why, why was this song composed? What happened to the composer? Who is the composer? What is their life experience? Finding all those things help you to express the music better and also to interpret the composer's intention. The accompanist must have a strong sense of rhythm and timing, knowing when to accent certain notes. I've already said something about that earlier. You have a sense of time and really knowing when to accent to emphasize to certain note, when to use legato, staccato, and when to emphasize specific phrases or musical gestures. Furthermore, an accompanied with good musicality can effectively use dynamic to create contrast and drama. Yes, uh, we have a lot of dramatic song. No, but with the keyboard, we just the keys and the rhythm and the accent. Keys, uh, uh, the keys of the keyboard, you can, you can, Great contrast, rhythmic contrast, uh, um, um, dramatic contrast with the way you play them, with the way you play around with the rhythm. So a musical, uh, uh, a good musicality can affect the use of dynamic, uh, affect how how uh, a composer uses dynamics and to create uh, the contrast, contrast and drama in performances. They know when to play soft to create a gentle ambience or to gradually increase the volume. For a more dramatic, increase uh, the for a more dramatic effect. They also understand the importance of maintaining balance between the accompaniment and the main melody. Maintaining balance between the accompaniment and the main melody, ensuring that neither overpowers the other. Even though you strike to to maintain balance between the accompaniment and the main melody, we should also know that. It is not 50-50. A company that doesn't have the 50 percent, uh, 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 yeah, that doesn't have the fifty percent of the rights that they perform. Right, the, the lead uh, singer or the choir has fifty percent. It is more like 60-40. The sixty goes uh, to the soloist, then the forty comes to the company. Oh, you are doing this support you. Yeah, a company even though you are doing all these other things, they have these principles to follow. That doesn't make you superior. To, to, uh, to the main performer, you're still an accompaniment, you're still supporting, supporting the uh, accompaniment. Now, ultimately, musicality in piano accompaniment requires sensitivity, music intuition, and ability to connect the music and other performance. It is a skill that can gradually enhance the, the, the overall outcome of the performance and musical experience of, 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 the, of the listeners. I mean, the more musical you are, the better you are. It's not, it's not just applicable to accompanist. The more musical you are, the better you are as a singer, as a accompanist, as a, 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 a saxophonist, trumpet, whatever instrument you play. And all this I'm saying, they are not just, they are not limited to the piano. The people accompanying with sax, especially saxophone, there are a lot of, I mean, if we go into that, there's a lot of, to talk about accompaniment with saxophone. You don't just play. So, uh, the people have said you don't just pick up instrument and just play as a choir. You see, choir is singing, then you are playing some of play a lot of improvising a lot of wrong notes on what uh, the choir or so they sing it. That you want to play some of you want to accompany it doesn't it doesn't mean that anything goes. I keep saying it, not everything goes. You just have to be conscious, you need to practice what you're going to do, you need to perfect it. 
and make sure to, to make sure it's in line with the rest of, of the performer, with the rest of the of the ensemble is doing. So you don't just pick up the instrument and you jump in and you start um, playing notes upon notes, right, wrong, um, up, left, right, and center. I think that you should compress with every place as well. A lot of saxophones are guilty of, of that. Now, I also advise people that sometimes after you play something, go get the record and listen to it. Play it back. Later, I'm going to play also music samples of, of when a compliment goes wrong or, or when we start talking about what makes it bad at coming, I'm going to give us some musical examples. You just hear sometimes, you see if somebody playing a saxophone or somebody playing a violin, playing something, you, you, you can hear that this person is off, but the person, when I say, doesn't care. You, you, you can do better, but then you don't just do anything because, yeah, you feel it's a one time performance that nobody's going to know or something like that. But then when you listen to the music or when somebody's listening online, especially now that most uh, most activities, most things you find them online, you're, you, you're embarrassed sometimes. What people play embarrasses you. You feel embarrassed about one room. What is this? The, 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 it will make you cringe. I think those things are what we should look into, not just the pianist, but the saxophonist, the people I want to accompany with any instrument you're accompanying with. Let's talk about what makes a bad accompaniment and impact of mixed place accompaniment. Now, the first point we'll be talking about is contradicting styles. Because I've noticed that most, most of our, most of our companies we have play every music same way. No. We cannot play every music the same way. There are four major styles we use them. Um, we use in the church, which is um, hymnal style, uh, classical style, contemporary style, and traditional style. The way you play classical style, we all know how classical is played, is is different and similar to the way you play hymnal style. But the way you play contemporary style is totally different from the way you play classical and hymnal style. Same with traditional. Now, if you're going to play him now, the way you play contemporary, or, play, or you play contemporary the way you play him now, then there's a problem. There are other different styles, and there are ways of playing them. Now, each musical genre has some defining basic characteristics. Accompanying some genre with an opposing style amount to autumn musical completion, except in a well-defined arrangement. Now, if you're going to use, for example, if you're going to use a contemporary style to accompany him, yeah, you must really make sure that the musical arrangement is top notch. The musical arrangement must be very well done. If not, it's going to be, I mean, it's going to result to a musical confusion. That, uh, I mean, any person that musically inclined, inclined in the audience will shake their head and like, and be like, what is this? Now, let's look at some negative effects of using contradicting styles in accompaniment. Lack of cohesion. You know, contradicting musical styles can cause a lack of unity and coherence in the overall musical composition. Now, listen again. Contradicting musical styles can cause lack of unity and coherence in the overall musical composition. This can make it harder for the listener to understand and appreciate the piece as a whole, as a conflicting style may not blend well together. Now, if you if you uh, you might think that uh, that if, what you play the way you play it in your little corner, your little parish, that uh, people there like it, they don't really complain or that is what they like. That is why how, how we do it. This is how they want us to do it. That, that is how to do it. That is how they want you to do it is because that is how you've been doing it. You've been feeding them that same thing, that same way for a very long time that they've gotten used to it. Now, when you keep giving somebody one particular thing, the person, yeah, they, they, they will accept it, they will. I assume that, oh, this is the way it's done. This is the way it should be done. This is what is obtainable. But then in the right scheme of things, that is not, that's not how it should be done. So if you're doing something same way, now this is opportunity for you to think about 
other way of doing it. So if you are going to accompany, the way you accompany courses, is the way you accompany prayer ministration, is the way you accompany congregational hymns, you are going to have called the course musical confusion. To the people, to you and the people around you may not see it, but an outsider that is musically in, that is musical inclined will spot it. Now, confusion and distraction. Use of contra contra contrasting styles can be distracting and confusing for both performers and listeners. The use of contrasting style can be distracting and confusing for both performers and listeners. There is some instances where you, where you, I, 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 I've been some in some instances where uh, the choir is about to sing and the keyboard is start playing. All of a sudden, everybody's confused. Everybody's totally lost. They don't know where the keyboard is going. They don't know where, where he's coming from. He just, I mean, doing his thing. And the choir, in some cases, the choir doesn't even know where to enter. Either it's a conductor, the conductor is totally lost. He doesn't know what is going on with the pianist. Now, what do you think this style could cause? It can create a lot of confusion to the extent that nobody, everybody's totally lost. Both the singers and the listener, they are like, okay, where are you? Where, where are we? What is going on? When there's a sudden shift in style, it can bring jarring and disrupt the flow of music, making it difficult to follow and enjoy. Now, miscommunication of intended emotion. This is a serious one. This is quite serious. Miscommunication of intended emotions. Musical styles are often associated with certain emotions and aesthetics. When contrasting styles are used together, there's a risk of miscommunicating the intended emotion or messages of the music. This can lead to a disconnect between the performer's intention and the audience perception. This can lead to a disconnect between the performer's intention or I would say the composer's intention and the audience's perception. For instance, when you can only play one kind of accompaniment, one style of accompaniment, you will not be able to pass the message from the composer across to the audience because that is the only thing you can do. You will not be able to, you don't, you, you don't, have, you don't have varieties. You, you don't have access to a variety of ways of doing it. So that will hinder the audience, the congregation, from getting the real meaning, the real perception of what the composer had intended. So that is why, as a pianist, you should practice to make sure that you are able to do different things at different times. You should know, have an idea. Just like I said earlier, the techniques, call that techniques, arpeggio, the syncopation, the trees and embellishment. You should have all those things in your basket so that you can easily use one when need be. So, for instance, another example is that when you're playing a worship song, when you have a worship song and a contemporary song, you should be able to play it in manner that suits that kind of a song. It is not because you, 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 you can play this particular style, then you use that particular style to play him, you're using that particular style to play worship, and you're using that particular style to play accompaniment, a, a traditional piece or African piece. That is not how it should be. You should be able to use a particular style to play a particular music. If not, if you're going to play a gospel, as a particular style used to play gospel, it will turn from a gospel music to something else. Or a music that is meditative, you're singing a song that is meditative, a prayerful song, that's the way you accompany, accompany that song. It will turn to a prayerful or a meditative song to a dance, to something you can dance to, which is not the original intention of the composition. Now, lack of authenticity. Contrasting musical styles and accompaniment can sometimes be seen as a forced attempt to appear diverse or experimental. Contrasting musical styles using accompaniment can sometimes be seen as a forced attempt to appear diverse or experimental. If the stylistic contrast does not serve a clear musical purpose, or if it feels forced or inauthentic, 
can be perceived as a chimiki or lacking artistry integrity. Now, if you are going to experiment with styles, but make sure it is something you have very, it's a style you're very conversant with. It's a style that you can manipulate. It's a style that you can, you, I mean, you, you are very comfortable with it. If not, the whole thing is going to feel forced. People are going to feel, the people listening are going to feel that, yeah, he, he's struggling with it. Yeah, uh, he, he's about to lose it now. He, he's getting it. He, 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 you are going to create tension among the performers and the and the and the um, listeners because you are trying to be experimental. You have not mastered what you are about to do. You are about to, you are doing now. Overall, why contrasting musical styles can be seen can be used creatively and effectively. It requires careful consideration and skillful execution to avoid this negative uh, effect of mention. It's, uh, it requires careful consideration and skillful execution to avoid the negative effect mentioned above. That you are going to, that you want to play a uh, uh, hymnal style, contemporary style, uh, um, a classical style or traditional style that you want to practice playing them does not mean that it should be done without applying the basic principles. If you do that, you're going to lose the essence of the whole thing. So if you're going to play, you should just endeavor to practice the particular style. Look at the song. Think, uh, just like I mentioned earlier about trying to imagine what the composer is thinking, how does the composer want this song to be? In most cases, not actually how you feel. You didn't write the song. If it is a song you composed, then uh, we, we take it from you. We do what you want. But if it's a song written by someone else, you should put yourself in that person's shoe. I said that earlier. What is this person trying to say? Is this song, is it a prayer? Is it song for meditation? Is it song for worship? Is it a dance? If you're using a dance to play a prayer, that's a problem. Now, I'm going to play some musical examples. I'm going to play the same song in three different ways. Now, I will explain, I will explain how the songs are playing. I will explain how those three are different and the proper, the proper and improper uh, ones. The song we're using here is, is my desire. I want you to listen to how it might desire. Naturally, it might desire is, is, is a prayer. It's my desire to be like Jesus. Uh, it's my desire to be like him. It's a prayer. It's a, a, a song for meditation and prayer. So this tie and the pattern of accompaniment used in playing this song plays a vital role in that interpretation. If you are going to interpret it, which is what it actually is, a prayer. So if you are going to interpret it as a prayer, your yeah, accompaniment style must depict prayers. It must, it must be in line with what the composer has in, in, intended or what you are trying to depict. You can't say that it's a prayer, then you are playing another reading that is not a, a meditative, uh, let me just say meditative breathing, you know, that's something like that. Something and you, and, and you are all over the place on the keys and you're playing a lot of uh, and notes and you are doing a lot of things and giving some reading that takes someone listening's mind from prayers, but rather dance. So let, let, let's listen to it. Now, I want you to pay attention to the accompaniment, to the piano part, the accompanying style. That's why our, our emphasis are on, not on the singer, just follow the piano line.
Now, is this accompaniment style, is it meditative? Is it prayer-like? Does it make you to listen to this song and want to pray? Or does it make you to listen to this song and want to dance, want to shake your head, want to sit back, uh, um, uh, um, grab a drink and uh, enjoy the reading and the whole entire show? Now, keep listening. <laughs> Now, we are going to listen to the same song by another person. Let's see how the keyboard, how the piano, how the instrumental is in this next version of this one, going to listen to it. Play the music and what they are playing, what their interpretation says. Whether it says, whether it, it depicts a, a dance, a, a groove, or prayers, meditation. Often failed him and caused him shame. It's my desire. Now, see, this part of the lyric says, Though often I failed and I brought him such shame, it's my desire to be like him. Though often I fail, and such shame is my desire to be like him. There is nothing happy about it. There is nothing playful about it. There is nothing danceable about it. It is a prayer. It is a wish. It is a med meditation. So yeah, your accompaniment line, the accompaniment should show that. This is what, you, now listen again, listen to the accompaniment. Pay attention to the accompaniment of this music again. It's my desire to live for Jesus. You can see that compliment is subtle. It's very subtle. It's very mine. It's flowy. It's meditative. It is not all over the place. Jesus. It's my desire. Before him, oh, often failed him and caused him shame. It's my desire. You see the sharp contrast between the uh, the first example and this other one. The first example we take your attention from the lyrics. We take away your attention from the lyrics and focus it on the music because the music is such that uh, that you can dance to, you can shake your head, you can 
back your feet though. You're going to take away attention from the music from what the song is talking about. Uh, attention from the lyrics, from the music, what the song is talking about, to the real purpose of the song, to the music. Meanwhile, this other one, the accompaniment is in there. If someone in there is very mellow, it makes you focus on the lyrics, focus on the singer, trying, focus on trying to understand what the singer is actually talking about. If you could see where Jesus brought me from to where I am today, then you would know the reason why I love him so. Someone might actually wonder what is wrong with the very first one. Nothing is wrong with it. My only issue with it is just, is just that it doesn't create, the coming of the very first one doesn't create the best atmosphere. It doesn't give the best meaning to the song. Now, you could do that. You could do that particular one. You could do it if it's a concert. You could do it. Or if it's a, a, a gathering. A, a sort of a gun you can do, but if it were to be a ministration in church, that accompanying style does not do justice to it. It moves the attention from the song to the music. That was the only that's the only thing wrong with that particular one. Nothing else. Now let's talk about a lack of coordination among accompanists. These are what that makes what recipe for a bad accompaniment. All this thing I'm, I'm mentioning, lack of coordination among accompanists. When two or more accompanists, uh, accompanists accompany a performance, it is of utmost important that they rehearse and decide on what each accompany should play in line with the structure, genre, and the dynamic of the performance. Keeping it simple, they are by reducing rhythmical, organizational, organizational and structural confusion of having too many simultaneous pattern. When two or more accompanies accompany a performance, it is of utmost importance that they rehearse and decide on what each accompany should play in line with the structure, genre, and the dynamic of the performance. Keeping it simple, thereby reducing rhythmic, organizational, and structural confusion of having too many simultaneous patterns. Now, what will happen when you don't do this? There will be distractions. When accompanies are not coordinated, they can lead to several distractions on stage. For example, if the pianist is not in sync with the singer, it can cause the singer to lose focus, make mistakes, or even lose their place in the music. These distractions can disrupt the flow and coherence of the performance. Lack of coordination can result to timing problems. Another problem of lack of coordination with accompanies, timing problem. Each accompany may have their own interpretation of the tempo and dynamics, leading to discrepancies and inconsistency in the performance. This can lead to a confusion and difficulty in maintaining cohesive musical interpretation. Now, classic clashing harmonies. Pay attention to this, clashing harmonies. Inaccurate coordination can cause clashes in harmony. If the accompanies are not synchronized, they may unintentionally play conflicting chords or musical figures. This can create dissonance and, and a lack of harmony, negatively impacting the overall musical performance. Most of our pianists are this way have three keyboard display. Sometimes it happens when we go to go to um, conferences or meetings, you see three keyboard display. You notice that one person is playing, uh, if you say him, one person is playing the four part. The, Another person is playing uh, more like um, a, a contemporary accompaniment. Then some other person, person is playing vamping or, or, or 
whatever, or whatever. You see, most time, these three people may not practice. Sometimes, uh, uh, the person playing the four part is actually is playing the actual harmony of the song. Why the others? They are playing what they had, what they've had, what what they, what they are hearing, which may not be proper harmony. See, if you listen to this music, uh, to that performance after you hear a lot of clashing harmonies, clashing rhythmic patterns. One person is playing him, one person is playing uh, more like a, a contemporary style, and the other person is playing uh, traditional. When when you find this stuff like that, it's more it's African stuff. It's traditional. Is you have a lot of rhythmic and harmonic clashes. That is not correct. If you listen to them, you don't enjoy the music because of all those discrepancies. It's just a lot of distraction. If you are trying to follow the piano line, you are you are you see that a lot of things, a lot of things are going on. Same with uh this music I played earlier, if my desire, the one performed by uh, at the hilltop western performed by Western Hilltop Choir. You notice that the keyboardist, one was playing the contemporary style. And the other one was giving us the, the, the more like the dance stream I was talking about, the vamping uh, kind of thing. See that that that's the kind of discrepancies you see. So sometimes if if the person playing playing uh, um, playing uh, uh, the uh, more like a contemporary accompaniment is getting all the chord progression, the person playing the other rhythmic pattern may not get all the chord progression, thereby causing harmonic confusion. Clashing harmonics. Communication breakdown. Lack of coordination among accomplices can hinder effective communication of stage. It becomes difficult for performers to communicate and respond to each other's musical cues, dynamic and phrasing. This breakdown communication and disrupt the essential interplay and collaborative nature of musical performance. Now, sometimes this happens, especially um, when the conductor don't see the accompanist. You see, the conductor is at uh, one end of the of the stage, the accompanist is hidden somewhere at the back. Then if you have another instrumentalist, they are somewhere. So the conductor and the conductor is not able to coordinate. The keyboard is not able to follow the conductor. The instrumentalists are not able to see a lot of things. There's just a miscommunication. You are, you are grappling with a lot of... Uh, a lot of uncertainties is things we should avoid. Loss of confidence. When performers experience a lack of coordination among the company, it can significantly affect their confidence on stage. They may become uncertain, feel unsupported, or worry about potential mistake caused by lack of synchronization. This loss of confidence can hinder their ability to perform at their best and may dampen the overall energy and enthusiasm of the performance. You see, when you're playing and you're not sure what your company is going to do, you have three accompanies, you have a violinist, a, a violinist accompanying, accompanying a, a singer and the keyboardist, but then you didn't rehearse, you're not sure what is going to happen. You see, if the singer is the person conscious of, is a, the person conscious of the performance, she, the, the person will be filled with a lot of uncertainties or uncertainty, uncertainties of what, what would be. See, you're going to dab in the whole performance, you're going to be conscious, they will, they will be like, ah, what is going to happen now? We didn't rehearse it, we didn't plan this, we don't, I mean, a lot of uncertainties. And that is a recipe for disaster in performance. If you're uncertain of what your comps are going to do, if you're uncertain of the notes they're going to play, if you're uncertain of, 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 of the entire thing, it, it weakens the performance. And we'll play you, I'll play you videos of what this can cause. When you have fantastic players, but because they didn't rehearse, because they, they are not coordinated, see, you see a lot of mishap, a lot of discrepancies in, the, in, their, in their performance. Now, diminished professionalism. Lack of connection reflects poorly on the professionalism of the performance and may give the impression of lack of preparation. I just said that. It gives the impression, it's not even may give, it gives the impression of lack of preparation. It can detract from the performance impact and make the whole ensemble appear disjointed or unpolished. Yeah. If you don't practice, if you don't sync, if you are not coordinated, the three accompanists uh, um, or four companies are not coordinated, everything appears weak, extraordinary, and unpolished. Like 
It's like people that, that, that came to play, people that don't know what they are doing. Now, overall, lack of connection among the companies with FMI can lead to distractions, timing issues, harmonious clashes, communication breakdown, loss of confidence, and dignity of professionalism. It is crucial for our companies to work together in harmony to create a cohesive and impactful musical experience for both the performer and the audience. Now, let's listen to this record. Now, this is Lib Declaration Enugu. Just pay attention to this pianist. I don't know who is trying to trying to create a timpani effect in this performance. He's playing, trying to create a timpani effect in this performance, but it 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 is not a yeah, listen, listen. What is happening? They think funny. It's not, I mean, whosoever is playing did not think it through. They did not analyze it. They did not practice it. It would have thrown them. Um, I doubt if, 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 this, if the singers we are listening to it would have thrown them off. Because that is now, if you are going to have a drum with the choral music, that is not how it is done. Think funny is um, it, it, you don't just play, you don't just use uh, um, because you feel that it should uh, you should have that effect, then you do it without constructively arranging or constructively uh, 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 preparing how and where you should play it. This is what happens if you listen to the recording, it throws you off. You see what they're playing, it's not just think funny. For the others, the timpani doesn't play every note on the keyboard or the drum, they don't play every note. They are designed the way they play. Sometimes they play just two notes or three, in some cases four. They don't just play all the notes. Just like the, uh, the pianist here is trying to play, using that sound to play all the notes. It doesn't always go well. They are made to play. Usually the dominant, uh, uh, the tonic, the subdominant or whatever. They don't play all the notes. So this is what happens. If this music, if, if this, uh, this thing was well amplified and you are playing this while these singers are singing, it's going to throw people or you're going to cause a lot of musical confusion. Okay. The next point will be considering what makes a bad accompaniment is wrong harmony or inefficient alternative harmony. Wrong harmony or inefficient alternative harmony. Harmony defines more than temperament in music. Accompanying with wrong chord progression robs the audience of the desired effect a composer had intended and thereby waste the composer's intellectual resources. However, musical composition could be arranged in some special occasion, but it is also important to note that such a rearrangement must be well defined, probably better than the initial composition or entirely different, utilizing the composer's melodic or structural motive, but never lower in standard than the original composition, nor neither there, nor here. Just like I explained earlier when I was talking about elements, elements of, uh, of a good accompaniment. Harmony is what paints the composer's intention. Harmony just is it, 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 what depicts the composer's intention. So if you're going to play a song, you should play with the right harmony. Because playing with the wrong harmony, you're going to, you can never paint the right color with the right harmony. You can never create, cre create the, the, the right ambience with the wrong harmony. You can never create the right mood, the right temperament, the right emotion with the right wrong harmony. Now, now there are rooms in this particular instance, there are rooms for rearrangement. If you're going to be arranged 
a composer's work utilizing their melodic motif or uh, harmonic motif, what shall we arrange it must be better. If you have a better option, better chord options on that particular comp composition, what you're doing must be better than the original composition. Not something less, less than the what the composer has written, or something not as as good as what the composer has written. You are making rearrangements and you, uh, what I would call an inferior rearrangement. If I'm going to make a rearrangement, it should be superior for what the composer has uh, already done. Not doing something that is neither there nor here. It's not as good as the compo composer's uh, original composition. It is not. Um, it is not. A, 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 it is not good enough to be a different arrangement. But you see that you are making rearrangement. It's not as good as the composer. It's not good enough to be a different arrangement. It is neither there nor here. It is just somewhere in between and doesn't and does not make a lot of sense. So if you are going to rearrange the music, make sure the chords you are using the chords that depict the emotion of the song. Now, wrong harmony. Wrong harmony can result in chords that clash with the melody or other part of the music. This can create dissonance, a sense of discord, making the music sound chaotic and unpleasant. Yes, you are playing your song, you're a keyboardist, and then the only chords are very comfortable with the chord one, four, five, six, and two. Then if there's accidental in the solo line, accidentals in the in the choir part, or you have soprano all the tenor bass, soprano is singing the melody, bass is singing the the, uh, the bass line, then the tenor and alto has accidental disease, the toss, the moss, the fees. I think you should they should be ignored. No, they are part of the music. They are what makes that music what it is. Instead of you playing wrong harmony, it is better you play nothing at that point. At that point, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't know what what they call it. It, it is better you you leave it, you leave it for the singers to sing that part, sing the right note, sing the correct harmony, than playing where you have a, a, a re fi re fi and la. You play chord two re fa la, re fa la is doing re fi la. They are two different things. So if you are playing re fa la and uh, someone someone in in the choir or the soloist is singing re fi la, ze fi and fa, they are going to clash. Or where you have a, you have a ZT record or me ZT record, you play me sorti chord. You see, all those things are going to clash. Those are things you, you should be conscious of. Those are what makes bad accompaniment, especially this clashing chord. You might play it, you might think it will fly, it will fly, but when somebody that is kind of inclined hears it, it drinks in the head, it makes the person I mean, it, it, it causes severe destruction. Accidentals are, are, are part of the chord. Do not skip accidentals. If you find, if, if you're if you accompanying a song and you see that a part has an accidental, that accidental is part of the music. If that accidental does not reflect in your accompaniment, what you're accompanying, your, your accompaniment, accompaniment is, part, is wrong. The chord is wrong. Whatever, wherever there's an accidental, no matter the part it is, it must reflect. Those accidental notes, they are part of the thing that makes that music what it is. They are the ways the composers, they, they, they are the tools the composer used to paint the emotion, to depict what, 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 what they are feeling on the paper. So if, you are, if there is a chromatics, if there is an accidental note somewhere in that music, it must be in your accompaniment. If it's not there, what you're playing is wrong. It's Clashing is going to clash when they sing if the singers are singing it. Now, lack of coherence. Now, I mentioned this lack of coherent coherence uh, uh, a lot of times. Harmony is an essential element of musical structure, providing a sense of coherence and unity. When wrong harmony is used, it can disrupt the overall musical structure and create confusion for the listener. Just like I said, we start having clash. You have a thaw, a thaw. You decide to ignore that thought in your accompaniment and play it as a T, or you ignore it totally and play something else that, that you don't have to play over that. That's confusion for the listeners. It doesn't rhyme, it doesn't, it doesn't make much sense. Loss of emotional impact. Harmony plays a crucial role in conveying emotions in music. Incorrect harmony can dampen or even contradict the intended emotional impact of the piece leading to loss of depth and connection with the listener. I've said it, I've explained this thing earlier. 
harmony plays a crucial role in conveying emotions in music. Incorrect harmony can dampen or even contradict the intended emotion, emotional impact of the piece, leading to a loss of depth and connection with the listener, weakening the accompaniment. The purpose of accompaniment is to support and enhance the melody or main musical line. Wrong harmony can overshadow or undermine the melody, making the accompaniment feel disjointed or distracting. Yes, when it clashes, when the choir is singing the correct note and when the slow singer is singing the correct note, and you are playing wrong note, it's going to clash. Everything's going to feel disjointed. You're going to feel like the company doesn't know what it's doing, which is not proper. Misinterpretation of the composer's intent. Composers carefully choose harmony to convey their musical ideas and create a specific atmosphere. Composers carefully choose harmony to convey their musical ideas and create a specific atmosphere. Using wrong harmony can distort the composer's intended message and lead to a misinterpretation of the piece. I've already said something that I don't think I need to reemphasize. Loss of credibility. Incorrect harmony can make a musician or accompanist appear incompetent or unskilled. It can undermine their credibility and professionalism, especially in the context of a performance or record where accuracy is expected. And it is uh, that, 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 that's self explanatory. If you are company and then you are playing wrong harmony, wrong chords, oh, we just assume that he doesn't know what he's doing. He, he's, he has a poor musicianship training. His musical sense is, um, is, uh, is zero. Uh, well, if you are the only keyboardist in, in, in your, in your players, people might, oh, they might ignore and just do as if they don't, uh, they don't hear it because, uh, well, uh, there's nothing they can do. They just have to make, do up what they have. But as a company, it doesn't tell good on you. It does not tell good of you. So as a company, should make sure that you pick up scores whenever you want to accompany something. You pick up scores, the part where you have chromatics. Try to find the chords. You don't even know, you don't have to know the name of the chords. Just try to play those notes. If you find them in the score, try to play those notes. You do not have to, you do not have to know the name of the chords. Just play them, play them, trace them. If you say, if, if you can't cite, a lot of people can't cite sing. They say the problem is that they can't cite sing. If you can transcribe, you can play the correct thing. Transcribe soprano of the tenor bass and trace the notes on the piano, especially where you have those chromatics, those altered notes, those accidentals. Try to play the notes as written by the composer. You never go wrong by doing that. Wrong harmony use a company can negatively, negatively impact the musical experience by creating dissonances. I've said before, a lot of clashing. This, I mean, a good percentage of our companies are, are guilty of this. It's a lot of clashes, especially when you see, I was trying to explain uh, uh, lack of coordination among our companies. I explained something like this. One is playing uh, 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 the, the hymn, the hymn, playing all the right chords. The other person is playing a, com uh, a contemporary style or meeting some important note. Then the other person is fine you know, doing something that are totally off. You see, if you're going to, if these three people are going to play together, you should sit down and sort all the chords. Say, this is the chord we are using at this point. This is the code we are using at this point. That was make, make 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 the whole thing make sense. If you are, if you three or more keyboards are going to play and, and the songs you are having has a lot of chromatics and you don't rehearse it and you don't uh, uh, sit down to decipher those chords to understand those chords. I mean, you are going to play a lot of dissonant notes. You are going to create a lot of dissonant confusion and a lot of emotional depth and coherence. It is essential for musicians to develop a strong understanding of harmony, of harmony and use it correctly to enhance their overall musical effect. Now, I'm going to play us uh, some music, one of the most common pieces we play in church, so that you, you see what happens, how it sounds when you play it with the right harmony. One sat alone beside the highway begging. His eyes were blind, the light he could not see. He clutched his rags, shivered in the shadows. Then Jesus. 
Jesus came and bid his sorrow flee. When Jesus comes, the tempter's power is broken. When Jesus comes, our tears he wipes away. He takes the gloom. Could not conquer passion, lust, and sin. Their broken hearts. Now listen to this part. Listen to this call. That's that's the, the call that most of us omit. Listen to this chord. It is a, a, a flattened submedian major chord. Had left them sad and lonely. Then Jesus came and dwelt himself within. When Jesus comes, the tempter's power is broken. When Jesus comes, our tears he wipes away. He takes the gloom. Fills the life with glory for all is changed when Jesus comes to stay. I'll, I'll play one more song on this um, subtopic. Now, this song is this song is nothing is impossible when you put your trust in God. I said to play this version because uh, it, it, it is the choir being accompanied with just keyboard. Now, if you've been singing this song all this while and your accompaniment does not sound, I mean, the chords does not sound like this, then you have to pick this chord of this song and really analyze it. Because the chord has a lot of beautiful harmonies that most of us don't play. So if you've been singing it differently, if you've been playing it differently, I mean, your the chord you're using to play the song is different from what you're going to hear in this recording, you should pick up the score and reanalyze to get the proper chord.
Now, let's listen to another version of the same song and do the writing. The harmony in this particular song is so beautiful and mature that, that I mean, if you are playing, then we're going to have a lot of fun. You're going to have loads of fun playing this music. Now, forget about the drums and follow the harmonic progression. The harmonic progression, that's what you're interested in. Forget about the chords and just follow the harmony. If the harmony you play, whenever you are playing this song, does not sound like this, please go back to this score, study this score, and have fun playing the writing. <laughs> Welcome to the second part of the seminar. We will be talking about the role of freedom and accompaniment in style definition and hybridization. Now, rhythm and accompaniment play a crucial role in defining the overall style of musical piece. They contribute to the overall feel, mood, and genre of a song, and can help differentiate different styles of music. Rhythm is a pattern of beat and accent in a piece of music. It provides the framework and structure for the music, and helps to establish the tempo and the group. Different styles of music have the extinct rhythmic pattern that are characteristics of that style. For example, a polyrhythmic syncopated repetitive rhythmic pattern is associated, associated with traditional African music, while syncopated offbeat rhythm are commonly found in jazz. The rhythm in a song can be influenced by the cultural and historical context in which it was created, further shaping the style of the music. Now, in the layman's language, music, uh, is determined the, the, the type of music is determined by the rhythm. You see that if a music is uh, if classical music, reggae, jazz, uh, high life, what makes it high life is the rhythm. What makes it jazz is the rhythm. What makes it classical is the rhythm. The chord progressions are same across both. Chord one in jazz, chord one in jazz is called chord one in classical, is a chord one in reggae, is chord one in everything. What makes them different is the rhythm. What makes them what they are is the rhythm. How you play chord one, uh, if you have a uh, chord one, four, five, one successively, how you play them in classical music, and how you play them in the rhythm, how you play them in highlight, what makes them. The chord does not change. Come in same all around, but then the rhythmic pattern you use in playing those chords. That's what we're going to turn those chords from uh, from him to reggae to high level to or uh, to other genres like that. Accompaniment refers to the supporting musical parts that complement the main melody of the body, add depth, texture, and harmony to the music, enhancing the overall uh, sound and style. The choice of instrument, chord progression, and harmonic sculpture using accompaniment can greatly influence the style of music. The choice of instrument, chords, progressions, and harmonic structures used in the accompaniment can greatly influence the style of music. Rhythm and accompaniment work together to establish the groove and feel of a song. Rhythm and accompaniment work together to establish the groove and feel of a song. The placement of rhythmic elements within the accompaniment, such as syncopation or driving percussion, can greatly impact the overall style and contribute to the listener's experience. The placement of rhythm, rhythmic elements within their complement. See, the rhythmic pattern be used within their complement, such as syncopation or driving percussion, and greatly impact the overall style. See, whatever style, whatever rhythmic pattern you decide to accompany, that's what's going to influence the overall style of that song. If a song is singing him, but then you're using a jazz rhythmic pattern to accompany the hymn, you're going to change the entire thing from him to, 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 uh, to something not him and not jazz. Same way if somebody's singing, 
singing contemporary, but then you decide to use um, um, the reggae or highly rhythmic pattern to accompany. I'm going to change that song from uh, contemporary gospel to, to reggae or high life. Overall, rhythm and accompaniment are the different components in defining the size of a piece of music. They work together to create distinct pattern, textures, and cues that contribute to the overall genre and mood of the music. Just as have a, uh, just, as, uh, just like I earlier said, the type of music is determined by the rhythm, not entirely the harmony. Because harmony is a crossbow, chords are a crossbow. It's just in jazz you have some added, added seventh and ninth and stuff like that. You still have a classical music, but not as elaborate as Fender in jazz. But no, those basic chords, how you play them, is going to make the rhythm you're using playing it. It's not going to make the part, make it the particular genre. It is. Now the style of music used. The most the one we commonly use are the classical or hymnal style, contemporary gospel style, or the African style. We play the classical or the hymns. Then contemporary and style. And then every other thing that's not classical hymn that you do is is African style. One of us mistaken that uh, thing that if you sing something in, in English, it doesn't make it African style. African style is defined by the pattern and the basic characteristics and not the language. You can be singing songs in English, but then every time about is Africa. You are singing Israel must go, Israel must go. Then everything about is Africa, except the language, you the language in English, it doesn't make Western music still African. There are lots uh, I mean, low bridges and sky, just right, it's normal. Um, they, 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 they all have African music characteristics, they are the African pattern song. What makes African pattern song is the really, it's the unique structure, how they are played, how they are composed, or what make them what they are. Now, a hybrid is a thing made by combining two different elements. In music, a hybrid could be created by combining different music genres. Uh, most music hybrids are secular versus secular music. You can combine two types of secular music to form a new type of music. For example, jungle music is a hybrid of reggae and house music. We all know what reggae are. We may not really know what a house music is, but then we can find that. So for you to get jungle music, you have to combine reggae and house music to create a jungle music. For instance, if you combine a, a high life and a reggae, you're going to get something else. So that's why secular versus secular hybrid is now. Sacred versus sacred hybrid. Hymns played in gospel contemporary style. When you have a hymn, but instead of singing it, playing, singing the hymn uh, cordially or playing them cordially, now you add a contemporary feel to it. Now what you mean by sacred versus sacred harmony, for example, this uh, you get up where you say that they sing hymns, but they don't really sing those hymns like hymns. They don't sing it like a pure, uh, like the way traditional hymns, hymns are, are sung, but rather they sing it in a contemporary style. They have another one which is secular, as a sacred, which uh, people do. People do so, so, something that if you get a piece of music and switch the lyrics and add God or Jesus to the lyrics, that's automatically a sacred song. No, that the word God, heaven, is in the song. Jesus in the song doesn't make it a sacred song. Now, well, that, that's why we, we, we have secular versus sacred hybrid. We have people get secular song and then switch the lyrics to a, a, a sacred test, change the test to sacred test, and then uh, try to pass it as, as a sacred song. That's not a sacred song. Then we start sacred and uh, sacred, secular versus sacred hybrid gives us stuff like uh, have gospel reggae, have gospel jazz, gospel jazz, which is not ideal in our setting. There is nothing like a gospel jazz or gospel reggae. Reggae is not a sacred music, so gospel reggae is a, is a fallacy. Gospel jazz is a fallacy. Same way as gospel jazz is a, is, is, is a, I would say it's, it's also a fallacy, but this, this genre don't have, uh, don't have their root in, in in religion, there's nothing sacred about them. Now, a world, if, a world on hybridization is a good musical future that involves serious creativity, not just a mere modification of music to fit into the new structure being played. It is worth noting that secular and sacred music cannot be ideally fixed together under any circumstance. 
as positionaries are opposing and contradictory on different levels. Taking a secular piece and changing the lyrics to secret text does not make it a religious music. I've already said something on that. You pick a song or, or a, a secret song, someone is singing a secret song, then you bring a gospel, you bring a reggae rhythm or a jazz rhythm or a juju rhythm to accompany it. Then you think that it's going to make that song. It's going to, that, 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 that song will continue to be a secret song. No, you change it. Yeah, the rhythm, that would tell me what it is. What if I accompany the song, that would tell me what it is. That you switch, that, that, uh, that, that, that the text of the song is sacred, doesn't make it, doesn't mean it's going to remain sacred. When you bring elements of secular music into it, it, it shift from being secret music to secular music. And there is not, you cannot mix white and black. You mix white and black, you get gray. Gray is neither white nor black. No, and you cannot mix hot and cold. When you mix hot and cold, you get warm. Warm is neither hot nor cold. And we all know what happens to, when somebody look up, look up, we know all, we all know what happens to it. So the ideal, the ideal style of hybrid, the ideal style of hybrid in secret, in secret setting, just secret versus secret, where you can get hymns and play them in contemporary. Or you get to be played in traditional African style. Traditional African style is different from high life and the rest of other, other traditional nations are going to come, come to later on. So you can do the traditional, we have the traditional African pattern. Those are, the, 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 that's an acceptable hybrid. But then having an established secular, an established secular genre, secular music genre, and fusing, getting an element of it and fusing it into sacred music doesn't make that song sacred music. You've changed it from being sacred music to something that is not, that is neither secular nor sacred. And, and it's, not, it's, it's not acceptable. It is either secret or secular. If you're going to create something in between, I don't know what you're, what you're going to do with that. It is not ideal. If you're going to sing a sacred song, if you're going to rearrange a sacred song, if you are going to create a hybrid, let it be sacred as a sacred. Now, this hybrid is not just something you just wake up and get element from here and there, fuse it together and, 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 and try to pass it. No, it takes serious time and effort. Have to seriously sit down and create it and make sure that you're not breaking, you're not breaking, breaking, breaking any rules. You are not, you are, you are filtering out every sacred element in creating hybrid, creating a secular, a sacred music hybrid. Now, we are going to go through some, some genres, some musical genres you use, the company using the accompaniment that are not totally ideal. So we are going to go through all the styles we use, all the genres of music we use, and the ones we found that traces in the accompaniment and the reasons why they are not ideal. We are going to go through their history to see how they have found that the origin of those songs and why they are not really ideal in our setting. Ubunma Jackson Chimene, who is well known as Jack Mira in the gospel music industry, is a Nigeria-born gospel music minister, keyboardist, songwriter and music director slash producer from Uko West local government area, Abia State. He is the last child in the family of seven children. His musical exposures began officially at the age of 10, way back in 2003, when he joined the youth music ministry of Watchman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement, Umwaya Diocese, after being a strong member of the All Saints Anglican Children Choir about three years earlier. Since then, he has been growing from level to level, making great impacts within and without Watchman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement as a musical coach and trainer in so many denominations, competitions, schools and studios. The 5th of May 1993 born music minister has written not less than 500 songs and also arranged songs for many artists both in Nigeria and those in the diaspora. He has produced, co-produced, and directed not less than 57 tracks in his music career as an artist, which began in 2015 officially, which includes his own 14 tracks, to his credits and other gospel music artists. Jack Mira is the founder of Jack Mira Music Planet.
Dukmira is currently based in Lagos as a growing businessman and happily serving God as the zonal choir master of Watchman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement, Agege Zone. All right, thank you so much. Um, you're welcome to uh, another edition of the training. Um, today we'll be um, working on basically the musical examples of some genres that we'll be treating in this very, very um, section. Okay. Um, I'm your brother, Obona Jackson Chimene, and uh, I'm here with my brothers. Uh, we are going to work together as a team, and uh, we'll do some, some explanations, um, more of practical, not really theoretical. We are not going to go deep into the theoretical aspect of it, because today um, we are going to work on the accompaniment aspect of uh, musical performances. So we'll be working um, with the topic, uh, the evil of misplaced accompaniment in our musical works, um, you know, we are really talking, going to talk much uh, more of our own environment, the Watchman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement, and uh, the styles of music that are found or traced in our musical performances. So we have some of them here with us, and uh, sit, um, just be comfortable, make yourself comfortable as you listen and as you participate. All right, so we are going to work on the reggae, we're going to work on high life, we're going to work on... Um, um, Bongo, yeah, we'll explain a little about some of them that you may be hearing for the first time, for some who may be hearing them for the first time. Okay, and we'll be working on Makosa, we'll be working on Aria Aria. Another one we'll be also working on is the one known as Boogie Woogie. And uh, yeah, I think we'll not be touching every genre of music in this very session. Okay, so for the, that of reggae, um, we'll be giving an example with some one or two songs just to show what we mean by that. Thank you so much, and uh, um, let's, let's kick off. Thank you. So for the reggae, we'll be working with, okay, Thus Says the Lord of Hosts, we can use this as an, exa as an example, just to portray what we mean by the reggae genre of music. Okay. Thus says the Lord of Hosts, I am a wonder, yes. I am a great wonder to my generation. aspect of um, harmony yeah because most times we're talking about also agreement of um, the group yeah if you notice um, one or two we are not really um, coming together like in agreement yeah in some progression so these are some of the challenges also that we we, we also decided like to bring up so that you understand um, when it comes to our accompaniment um, we have to as a team in any musical performance in Watchman we need to balance very well, especially when it comes to our harmony sometimes. Example, when we are, if you notice, when we are playing, um, higher and higher we, we go. So that you may have had a different um, chord um, progression, yes, from one or two sides, yes. So this is part of the class that we also would love you to. So actually now what we have there um, is, um, Higher, higher from four to go to five. Stronger and stronger for ah. Watchman, we never, never learn to five. All right, so that's 
because mm -hmm. I, we decided to bring that out so that you can also understand a part of um, the accompaniment um, class we are trying to portray. Okay, so that is it for the reggae. Actually, reggae, um, it's, um, we are not really going to talk about much about um, the historical aspect of it. Um, which is actually, it has a Rastafarian um, origin. Yeah. Okay, so um, one of the signatures you get to hear the, some bass rhythms that are um, traced um, that you can you, we find in the reggae uh, reggae genre of music, and sometimes the, we bring in the brass um, accompaniments, like you were hearing my brother was playing, pa pa pa, others pitch bended. <laughs> Permit to use the word pitch bended <laughs> notes. <laughs> they are commonly found in in reggae accompaniments. All right, so. We are, um, okay, for the choir songs, um, we have um, One sat alone Beside the highway begin Its eyes were blind The light he could not see He clutched his rags And shivered in the shadow Then Jesus came And bade his darkness flee Jesus come when Jesus comes. The tempest fire is broken. When Jesus comes, all tears are wiped away. He, I know that, I know that, I know that. So, um, the little we want to actually show forth here is now, if you notice also <laughs> for that of the chord, most the mistake that many of our players make is that they go straight to the, 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 the Da, 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 da. That's actually um, a wrong um, um, interpretation of the composition. Yeah. So what we have there is. Yeah. I'll just repeat that. Da, da. He clutched his rags and shivered in the shadows. Yeah. I, I believe you're following. All right. So that is it for. That aspect, the mistake that many people make in that aspect. Okay, so we'll be um, going over to high life music. High life music um, is actually very, very popularly known in Africa, West Africa to be precise. And then um, Nigeria, coming down to Nigeria, is known so much in Nigeria. In those days, some decades ago, we will not be going into that, like I said. So this session is specifically, uh, most importantly, we are focusing on the um, the... The, the examples, the musical examples that we have for the accompaniments and the genres. We are not treating all the genres in this session. Okay, so for high life, one of the signatures you find is the lead, um, um, the guitar accompaniment, the styles that are used, and also the brass um, styles that are used in the accompaniments for high life music. Okay, so sometimes you can find stuff like pam pam, pam pam, pam pam. Pam pam. So we'll just um use um yeah some some um accompaniments like that. So sometimes okay, let's just um hit um one or two songs in this high life performance. So Jehovah Jireh, we'll use it um in our church setting. We call it um you know three hands clap. Wow. Well, uh, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Jireh, call his name Jehovah Jireh. Okay, so let's go. Let let let's move, guys. Everybody call his name Jehovah Jireh, 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 Jehovah Jireh. Another genre we have here is the one known as um, bongo. But before we move over to, over to that, so, um, uh, for that of high life, there's one I think one that uh, we did not really treat. Yeah, we did not really treat one. Well. That's um, sometimes 
it's um used sometimes in the song um known as Ibike. Ibike Tanabome Yanabome Coco Bobi Oribomosobo is a rebut in the man Ibike so sometimes you observe that um, high life um, signatures are involved sometimes in songs like this. Yeah, even most times songs that also should um, we should use the choral style. We bring in the high life um, pattern in them. Okay, so let's get to bongo. Somebody may be asking, what is bongo? Bongo, bongo, bongo music. Okay, bongo music. Um, uh, actually. It's so popularly known in the southeastern part of Nigeria. Um, that is um, Imo State. Yeah, I remember when I was a little boy. Uh, before then, we'll be hearing about bongo style of music, bongo style of music, popularly known in Oweri. Yeah, it's actually a very, very powerful and a popular style of music um, that has also, you know, gotten into um, in church use and in some songs, especially during some prayer sessions in some parts of in some parts of Nigeria. So, um, bongo style of music, um, we we find out that one of the um, um, signatures is the bass, the style of the bass that is used in bongo, and we'll be picking out um, Jehovah Yah the most I just to portray um, that bongo style of music. All right, so we're just gonna show that now. Yeah. Jehovah, you are the most 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 God. Jehovah, you are the most Jehovah, you are the most Jehovah, you are the most you are the most I go, Jehovah, you are the most high. Jehovah, you are the most high. Jehovah, you are the most high. Jehovah, you are the most high God. So if you observe the style I was playing behind stuff like this in Bongo songs, in Bongo music, um you behind stuff like this. Jehovah, dun 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 so that is it for the bongo style of music yeah it's uh, it's actually very very popular like i said in the south eastern part of nigeria Imo state to be precise and weary and many parts of Imo, um, which it has actually gone so 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 popular in so many years ago when it began like i said i will not be entering much into the theoretical part of it this session is for um more of the practical aspect to show the musical examples by playing it on the keyboard all right so we are heading we are progressing actually i believe you're following all right um we are progressing to another genre which is known as the makosa style yeah makosa style of music even before we were born so many years ago it's been there um, um we 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 got to know that it was um picked from i think that should be congo yeah congo one of the major uh, that should be if if I'm if I'm not mistaken, Congo, yeah. So the Makosa style of music, one of the um, signatures in Makosa style of music is the guitar. My God, the guitar, the lead guitar, and the bass. These are the two powerful um, signatures that you, um, you pick out that you find in Makosa style of music. Okay, we are um, for the want of time. Um, let's just um, get into the uh, examples. So we have, you are the ma you know that you are the mighty God, yeah. All right, are you ready? Let's go. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
I think I'm. Uh, let us uh, do a little <laughs> st stuff here. Um, it would be wrong actually for somebody to use a song like "Oh, Thou the God That Know It All About Me" to portray <laughs> to play it in Makosa. That would be so contradictory. Yeah. Okay. Let us show you something <laughs> we we are trying to talk about when it comes to this Makosa, and then bringing in "Oh, Thou the God That Know It All About Me." Oh, Thou the God That Know It All About Me. song yeah this is actually a song that should be done you know solemnly this is a song that requires a solemn approach something simpler and calm you know for the um, song to really pass the right message to the listeners you know what i just picked out like one of the choir special songs that we use but it's actually i'm like trying to show how not to use especially this this particular genre you know how not to bring it in into the system yeah so song like it oh the, the lord that know it all about me you look down from heaven something simple and light like something simple and light it can even you know just a simple bass movement can do for such a song in order to make it calm the you know, music is all about communication and the way you interpret it that's how the people will understand it and also get connected emotionally to the song and uh, they, they, they did be done properly in the, in the lives of the people. All right. Okay, so let's go to Aria Aria, Aria Aria style of music. Some people will be asking, wow, Aria Aria. <laughs> Aria Aria, actually, you know, the name Aria Aria, people be wondering, where was it found from? Where the name Aria Aria, where is it? Where, 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 where? Aria Aria is actually, um, you know, um, the name Aria is popularly known um, to be um, a market. A big market in Abia State, Abba. So, you know, because it's like popularly, this style of music is popularly played in the Eastern part, especially Abba, you know, the, that style of music, you know. So that's why um, the people, it was stamped, like generally, the style was stamped Aria Aria style of music. So the, we can call it, that's the genre we, it's, we can give it, the name of the genre, we can give it Aria Aria genre. Of music. Okay, let's just give an example of um, what we mean by that. Um, uh, um, every living soul, we can we can use that. So we can use every living soul. Okay. Every living soul, every living soul, praise the Lord. 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 Are you a living soul? So I think um, let's try that sound, the ocarina sound. That is where you get to hear the roar, the conk. You know, this one maybe start sounding more like a western, westernized. Let me uh, um, use that word. Okay, so let me hear that area. Just give me that one. Give me that one. Fine. Thank you. Thank you. So this is actually what we mean by um, the area genre. Give, give me, give me, give me. You can hear that. So this is one of the continue. This is one of the, the signatures. When you hear this, wow, just know that that is an area style of music. And when you hear some movements like this, okay. So another song we can use also to portray this area um, style of music, um, like. Yes. All right, so our next example uh, I want to show for the Ariara genre of music 
like we said, uh, it's popularly known in the southeastern part of Nigeria. And uh, yeah, uh, we'll be picking out uh, one of choir masters songs, you know. <laughs> we turned it up, <laughs> we turned the song around, and uh, we decided that we just felt like using it like to show the Ariara style of music. And uh, okay, let's just do something on that, yeah, to cut the long story short because we don't have time, we have, uh, for the want of time. Okay, I believe you're enjoying it so far, yeah. Okay, and uh, if you've not subscribed to the Watchman Music um, channel, try to do so and uh, click on the notification bell. Thank you. Okay, so let me hear from my friends and my brothers. Let's do something on that. Okay. Ba the song is You'll Be My Helper. Yes, yes. You fight for me. That's that most or some of our companies do have when it comes to accompaniment or maybe trying to change a style of music from the original form to um, the new form that they want to perform it. Um, um, use they want to use uh, um, and perform it. Yeah. Okay. Um, this particular song now, um, the chord progression is very important um, that was used in that song. So that's one thing I also we need to we want to also portray in this very session is to show the right ways of doing it yeah so for this song now if you are trying to change it from um the way it was before we have to check the score very well like some years ago when we are doing the recording we needed to check through the score at least it helped us to pick out the very very, very vital parts of the progression and what is that okay i'm going to play it now just to show that ba, ba, da, ba, ba, ba. from ba from four to one ba da ba four to one ba tam ba ba dam ba ba the 
them back to one, then to five. Ba, ba, da, ba. That is for our era style. We're just trying to bring in something creative there. Okay, so now let's go to Boogie Woogie. All right, thank you. So um, we are going to work on um, um, the last but not the least. Like I said initially, that we are not really going to get into all the genres of music, but the ones that we are picking out from our material, like them, the seminar material that we prepared for this training session, um, we are not going to into every genre, like I said. So we are just picking out a few musical examples. So for Boogie Woogie, um, I may not really get into the historical aspect. Like I said, um, my brother Onyeka will be talking much on that aspect. And you understand the history of some of these um, genres of music. All right. So for Boogie Woogie, we are going to um, do a song titled God Can Do Anything. Yeah. All right. You ready? So this is how boogie woogie goes, you know, as I think we call it um, a walking bass or some stuff like that. Like it goes like, like this. So we are going to use a song, um, God Can Do Anything um, to portray boogie woogie. Let's go, let's go. God can do anything, anything, anything. So, um, I believe you must have picked one or two things from this particular one on the, I think just for the ones of time, um, in order not to pick, keep us here for long, uh, we'll be drawing the cotton here and, uh, let's say we'll call it a day. Yeah. And um, thank you so much. And uh, we appreciate your time and uh, don't forget, keep learning and we'll keep growing together. It's not stopping here. So. And don't forget to, please, if you've not subscribed to the channel of the Watchman Music Ministry, please try and do so. Thank you very much. I'm still your brother, Obona Jackson Chimene. Thanks, and have a beautiful day. Bye.